Hey everybody, Asher here, and it's Kerbal Space Program 1.0. So excited, it's time for the full release. The game is out of early access, so much has changed in this patch. And there's a lot to go over, and this video today is going to be going over some of the basics getting started in career mode in 1.0, because the atmospheric changes, the gameplay changes, they are abound. So let's just go ahead and see. First off, hello, Valentina Kerman, one of the new people here. And we're just going to be calling this... Uh, Asher YouTube 1.0, which is great. Now, one of the things that hasn't changed, and I'm just going to keep this on normal difficulty here, is that you have all of your default settings here. This hasn't really changed, but we are going to go ahead and do a different flag here. By the way, I've heard some people say they're not quite thrilled with my uh, new icon for my channel. I'm open to suggest it's not one dash. We'll do one zero. There we go. Let's start. So, so far, it looks kind of the same. It walks kind of the same as before. Here's the Kerbal Space Center at the very beginning of career mode but probably a few places just to start our mission control. We already have a few available missions, like launch your first vessel and escape the atmosphere. That's all well and good and new, but the other thing that's new is that you have set an altitude record, set a distance record, set a speed record, and those will go up incrementally. No longer do you have to launch multiple flights. You'll just get the rewards in context while you're flying, so that is great. Another thing that's new here, if we go to the Kerbal Center here, you have four orange jumpsuits, including two pilots. It's great that you start with two pilots, but notice also that I can't afford to hire a new person, so I better not kill my crew. Of course, I don't have permadeath off, so... Or I don't have permadeath, I don't have permadeath on for this one. And part of the reason is because I learned real quick in kind of my test run previously that uh, the atmospheric changes have really changed the game for how you fly this thing. And I want to demonstrate that here. And, and, I, and I really want to demonstrate that in kind of our uh, first two flights here. Because I think this video is going to just kind of encompass getting you on the basics on started here. Now you do have a few items that will get you going here. You always need to put a parachute on, which is great. Another thing that some people might miss, <clears throat> me the first time I played, is that you actually get a mystery goo canister to start with. So we're going to plop two of those on there. And for those of you who are really unfamiliar with the game, may just be joined for early access. You'll see I'm flying around the menus a little bit. Down here, this bottom number is the amount of funds that you have. We currently have 45,000 funds. This ship will cost 2,600 to launch. We can hit the engineer's report to see that we have a 30-part limit and a 18-ton uh, mass limit. That'll change as we upgrade parts. We can see our different contracts that we have available as well, and we can see the staging. Staging's pretty important. Now, the only part that you start off with other than that is uh, obviously you have the uh, modular grid segment, but I don't really use those as much. What we also have is the first engine here, the RT-5, the FLEA. It's not the RT-10, which is the hammer, which is what I'm used to flying with, the FLEA, which I love the little smudge effects on it, is going to get us enough to kind of get started on this first mission. So this is all you really need to fly here, so we're just going to call this the uh, Flyleaf, because that sounds like a thing. And we will put Valentina in as the captain, so she will take the first flight for our new Asher style Kerbal Space Program 1.0. So as we want, launch with the flyleaf, I still love the uh, kind of barbecue pit explosion here. A few things to keep in mind. You do still have SAS, and I do not want to actually have the parachute stage at the same time as the solid booster. Important to change that. I'll quick save just to make sure in case I get a derp warning here. F5 to quick save, press and hold F9 to uh, load quick saves. Very important to learn here. But the atmosphere, it's a little bit different. You actually cannot just fly straight up and then turn anymore. You've got to, got to, got to learn to control your ascent. You don't always need to be full throttle on your engines going upwards. And you got to negotiate with the atmosphere. Part of the reason is we just go ahead and we're going to hit launch. See how much faster I'm accelerating? This tiny, tiny engine, I love the smoke effects out there. We're already breaking all of our records here. You actually need a gravity turn kind of right away, but we're not going to be able to do that too much here. But we already have three completed... We have another, uh, we have another uh, atmosphere cleaner, but look how much faster we accelerate. Even with that one tiny little engine, we got up to 300 some meters per second. So we got four contracts completed. We have some mystery goo. We might as well observe it. So we have mystery goo while I'm flying around Carbon for uh, Seven Science. We have a crew report that we can take. Might as well do that. I could have, I think they actually have the antennas for that too. We're going to save this other mystery group for the other side. But look how happy Valentina is. She's happy to be in Kerbal Space Program. By the way, for those of you who do not know, you can press C or press IVA. We need to uh, actually stage this parachute right now. Or else we will dive bomb in. Because another thing is that you can't really turn this ship with just the SAS on default with the command pod in the atmosphere. It's like you're actually in a gassy soup of stuff. So you do not, you do not want that. But Valentina, if you use the IVA, you can actually look down here 
at the radial altitude on the bottom right. That'll show you if you're not on sea level, how close you are to the ground. It's actually very important to learn, especially for other missions. But we're going to go ahead and time accelerate, which you can do by pressing comma or period. Uh, when you're near a gravitational body like a planet or a moon, you can do physical time acceleration up to four times speed. I still have horror memories of the crack and destroying things that would have been good at one times time acceleration instead of four, but it's a bit safer to do now than it used to be. I still do not like having it when the parachute's about to deploy, which is going to be at 5,000 meters. So we'll turn it down. This old habits die hard. But we can actually get some science from the Kerbal Science or the Kerbal Space Center. Notice that we just went straight up and kind of straight down. So Valentina, did you enjoy the uh, G forces? Actually, we can check and see by hitting F3. Uh, G's, that's that's not bad. 9.3 G's. We'll, we'll make you lose your lunch if you're not ready for it. So we're gonna just land right back here. Once upon a time, the runway did not, or this part did not actually have landing physics, but they have changed that. So yay, we're here. And I can actually uh, go ahead and get some science from right here as well. And from the launch pad, there's actually not too much. Let's keep data. And another thing you can do to get science kind of early is you can do an EVA when you're landed like this. Take an EVA report, not much while flying around, and go ahead and hold on to that. Right click on your pod, and you can take the data from the crew report you got while flying, and then go ahead, press B to board. They changed that from beta. And then you can take another crew report while landed from the launch pad. So that's additional science you can get. And that's pretty important, but let's go ahead and recover the vessel. So that's our first mission, success, hooray! So we have different parts. If the closer that you land to the Space Center, the more money you get. So we got pretty much maximum recovery, and we're up to 64,000 funds, but there will be more. Valentina gets some experience and some reputation. We'll talk about what that means a little bit later. But see, if we just click off all these, and if we have our funds available, which you can see right there, the 20, uh, set the altitude record, and this is all just from your first flight. We didn't have to click on any new information. It's already automatically ended up there. So speed and launch our first vessel. Do we have any new missions? Only orbit carbon, which we'll do, but we're not going to do in this video. But you get, the reason my money went up, if you notice, or my funds went up, is that every time you do a mission, you get an advance. If you fail it within the time period, which I have a year to get into orbit, I hope I can do that, you lose the money, but you get an advance ahead of time. That helps you kind of get started. But here's the meat and potatoes of the update part two, not just the atmosphere, the science. They have changed how parts are distributed. Notice you start with the mystery goo first, and we'll zoom out here real quick just to show you that the tech trees change quite a bit, especially for uh, things that will let you actually store mined materials and create fuel on other planets, and those are all well and good. But we are at our humble beginning stage of career mode. So we will be doing the engineering bump and the basic rocketry bump. Basic rocketry gives us the Reliant, gives us the RT-10 hammer, and gives us a tiny fuel tank. That's good. Also, the uh, Science Junior, the Communicatron, and the Stack Decoupler. So I was right. I didn't have the antenna yet. Now, what do you want to aim for next? We actually have 15 research. So we're going to go ahead and do survivability as well because heat shield is very important and that is a new part that you can get. Radial parachutes are good. Service bay is important for uh, science experience or small components, RCS tanks, batteries, etc. I love that it's found on the side of the road. But the heat shield is by far the most important. So notice because we got that extra little bit of science from storing and removing stuff that we actually are able to get survivability as well. So let's build another ship with the intent of we may be able to we, we may be able to escape the atmosphere, and I apologize if the audio got cut off here. So excited. We're actually going to have Jeb fly this one, I think. Not Bob. Jeb. We want to spread the, uh, the glory here in the first episode. So what do we need for this to work? I'm pretty sure uh, I've had issues in the past with actually having the goo canisters right up here. Because another thing that actually works now for this update are nose cones. And we don't have any nose cones for aerodynamics yet. But... Let me put it this way, they will screw you up if you do not have them. So what can we actually do here? We can go ahead and get the Science Junior on here. I don't know if we'll escape, you know, I don't think we're going to escape the atmosphere in this one, so I don't know if we need the heat shield just yet. But we'll keep that in mind. I'm going to see what I can get from just these up here. We will, let me put it this way, what's the worst that's going to happen? I'm going to crash and burn and lose Jeb in the first episode. Because I actually kind of want to show you all something that is a little bit different here. My old strategy for being able to fly and cheese out of stuff really early 
was be was just taking stacks of uh, RT-10s or solid rocket boosters and just flying high into space, letting them explode into each other. And I want to kind of take this moment to show you why that's not really a great idea anymore for those of you who may be returning players. So we're just going to go ahead and go at this flight. This should actually be good enough for us to hit some more of our records here because once again we got to get speed, we got to get distance. But the other thing is that we're going to just be trying to fly as hard and as fast as we can. So this is the Flyleaf 2. And let's just go ahead and launch. I, I may as well, eh, if I put the Communicatron on, the problem is I don't have batteries yet. And transmitting takes a lot of energy. So that's all of our parts pretty much that we have. We have the decoupler, we have the solid boosters that we have in separate stages. I just want to show you what happens. Once again, you need to do your gravity turn really quickly for this, like you need to do it pretty much straight away. I'm going to keep SAS on. Jebediah is going to be the one flying here. And let's just see what happens. Before, I would go ahead and just stage when the solid rocket booster was almost empty. But the issue you have with this now is that because there's all kinds of new physics models, both in the atmosphere and everything else, is that I'm already accelerating really quickly. And I'm going to try and overheat this. It does take some more time, and the explosion actually shakes me up a little bit off course. So that's not great. The SAS helped just a little bit, but look at this. We're still, we're actually going so fast that uh, I don't know if we're actually going to explode or not. No, we, we didn't explode. That's good news. Should have I banked a little bit more? Are we actually, okay, we're going to 57,000. Oh, wow, you can actually see the parabolic arc just a little bit from there, so that's good. That's kind of technically how it's supposed to go. Now, I don't know if I'm going so high that I'm going to need the heat shield. So we may be saying rip jab this early, but let's go ahead and take a crew report. You cannot EVA at this point, so observe the mystery goo. We're in the upper atmosphere. This is kind of difficult, annoying science to get again and again. So we will persevere. I don't know if we're going to be able to do another mystery goo observation that will be relevant here. So upper atmosphere, we'll reset that experiment. All right, so let's just go ahead and detach. Maybe I should have put a heat shield on here. I don't know for sure. But we're going to at least fly a little bit and fall a little more because we are in the upper atmosphere. We're not coming all the way in from space. And we uh, have achieved, we've gone the distance. Jebediah does not fear death because I don't have permadeath on, but if he dies, that'd be appropriate. I mean, in my other test play, I killed... Uh, Valentina on her first flight. So for those, so there's some people that may be shocked or a little bit scared or worried if they're not familiar with Squad about, oh my god, their promotional teaser for Kerbal Space Program 1.0 has them exploding and dying. But if you've played any Kerbal Space Program, you know that is part of the scientific process. But still, we are going to see if uh, the Science Junior can actually um, ablate things. I don't think so because we don't have the heat pod or the heat pad on here. But still, look at all the extra stuff that we get just from doing those little flights. So solid boosters, maybe it is a little bit better, but still you do have to deal with the rocking of your ship. And it's as you're going to see in the next video, it's very easy once you're trying to push into the atmosphere to lose control. And you do not want to lose control. But what you want to do is just try and at least keep your uh, butt facing the periapsis and keep your SAS on. Because if you don't, you cannot actually turn out of a tailspin. Like how I had Valentina die, and there's the other hidden space center over there, part one, uh, was actually, I had my heat shield going, I was coming in from the atmosphere, it was all well and good, and then my thing flipped over. And when it flipped over, well, that was that. And I think that part of that was because these mystery goo units were not where they should have been. So we are going to have a little bit of fire. We're still in the upper atmosphere, we're not going to worry about that yet. Question is, do I overheat just from this? Whoop, see? This is a good demonstration, even with my SAS on. And I'm trying to get out of this drop, and I can't. So we're just going to go ahead and observe the mystery goo, because science, really, while flying at Kermit? Okay, let's go ahead and just whoop, right away. See how much faster that shook and everything? We're only at 40-something meters per second now, and we should be able to get some mystery goo from the ocean. So that'll be some science. But yeah, if you, if you get in a tailspin like that, you're not just going to be able to spin your way out when you're in the atmosphere. So that is a new challenge and one that I didn't really anticipate. And it made me feel a little better watching some uh, other players who are experienced with Carbal Space Program struggle with those changes too, even ones that had early access. But we do have lots of uh, sciences to get. 
such as set the speed record, record 17, 11, 25.5 kilometers, 19 kilometers, 5,000 meters, 700 meters per second, all these records, all the cache right there. And we shattered more speed records. We actually broke speed records that had their own speed records. Now before we actually go and pack this up, we're gonna go ahead and land here. My ship did not break apart, although that force really hurt because I had four times time acceleration. Let's go ahead and observe the mystery goo in the water. And we are gonna go ahead and see if we can, uh, can I rotate you? Yeah, I can rotate you in the water, that's good. We're gonna do kind of the same thing we did before, but another thing that you can try and do early is every time go ahead and go to the Space Center and see if there's a contract you can grab. We don't have one yet because we didn't escape the atmosphere. That'll be for next video. But look at all these things we've done so far, all the achievements we have gotten. Let's go, uh, can I actually, I can actually target the flyleaf from right here, which is fantastic. See guys, we're not that far away. But once again, what we do is just EVA. EVA reports over the water, keep the data, grab the data, store the data, and then if we let go real quick, look, I'm on a boat. No one's ever said that joke before. All right, so he's swimming. EVA report from the water. Spacesuit was 100% necessary. Have you seen the pollution of the oceans in front of the Kerbal Space Center from all of the rocket fuel that's going on in there? So we don't have to board. I'd like the board. But yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for uh, this kind of first kind of guide for getting started here. And we'll just recover the vessels here separately because you can do that. Jebediah has a little bit of science on him. So there we go. EVA from the water, recovery of the part that survived a flight. Then Jebediah gets experience as well. And then we can even click over here on the flyleaf and recover this as well. And even more science. We're up to 51 science now, which is fantastic. And the parts weren't too far away either. So for some suggestions going forward here, because we are going to be looking at this in the next video as well, stability is important to get because nose cones actually have physics now. And general rocketry is important, at least because of larger boosters and larger fuel tanks. So that's science well spent. And we'll kind of go over what the next choices that you have are. But if there's two upgrades I suggest you make early, one of them is going to be to upgrade the launch pad because that gives you a big boost in the weight you can launch. And then the other one, well, also it makes it look nice. Then the other one is actually upgrading the vehicle assembly building. We don't have the funds for that yet, but that's what we're going to be looking at next video. So this is Asher with Kerbal Space Program 1.0. It's fun. It's fantastic. And there is a lot more to go and delve into it because there are plenty of new things available. Not yet, but as we escape in the atmosphere and make it into orbit, you will see the contracts and the game really start to open up. I want to give a kudos again to Squad. They've done a fantastic job with, with this game for years, for years. I've gotten way more enjoyment out of this game than many others in the time frame, and it's only just now released. This is really a storybook of early access done right. So enough gushing for me. This is Asher. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, feel free to like. Feel free to comment, share your own stories of explosions, etc. And I will see you all next time.